the householder life, the family, fearless Vardhaman, chased by Indra, and the death of the parents. Now, here, let's talk about the family. This is the family. You got to keep certain things in perspective. Again, with regard to family also, uh, there is some differences between Digambar and Sritambar. But the relationship, the first mother is Devananda, I already explained you, first father is Rishabdev. For Sritambar tradition, Digambar tradition, I explained you, Krishna and Siddhartha, okay? Elder brother is Nandi Vardhan, both, both traditions believe that way. Uh, Sister-in-law is Jetsna. Okay. And that also, what is the place? What is the Gotra? This Gotra is important in ancient traditions all the time. Okay. The sister is Sudarsana. Wife is Yashoda. Now, here is the difference. Svetambar believes that Bhagwan Mahavir was married okay, in his life, okay, and he had a daughter called Priyadarshana. And Priyadarshana was married to Jamali, and that they had a daughter also is Seshwati. Now, these other things, you now tradition from the Gambar point of view, no, Bhagwan Vavir was never married. Okay, so that's the question of wife and daughter and granddaughter and all other things does not occur. Does not you no know, things for the Digambar traditions. Okay, and uncle is Suparswa. They are both. Okay? So this is just kind of the family over, overview. What I have indicated. Now, here is the life as an ascetics. But at the age of 30, both the traditions believe he took the diksha. Now, when he took the diksha, it is only him. It is not, there is nobody else with him took the diksha. Okay. May all other thinkers you will see, no, there are so many other people join in the Diksha ceremony, okay? So, there is a, a life as an ascetics. He self-initiated, so there is no guru. Self-initiated, and he was himself, okay? At the age of 30. Now, what happened, just a couple of things, when he was in mother's womb, okay, the Bhagwan Mahavi took a vow because his mother, Krishna, was significant in love of him. You know? And the fetus was not moving. And she was kind of a crying that she lost the fetus. And uh, again, uh, the reason the fetus was not moving because he doesn't want to pain mother. And he said, if I make moves, okay, it is going to hurt mother. And that is the reason Bhagwan Mahavid decided as long as his parents are alive, he is not going to renounce the world. He is not going to take the diksha. So, at the age of 28, his parents were dead and uh, he decided to take the diksha. Then his brother requested, hey, please don't do it now, all right, because just uh, we have lost our parents and uh, now I will lose you. It is going to be unbearable for me. And he waited for two years. Also, what he did, that during that, uh, in the second year, he distributed all his asset to the needy people. Like our current tradition, when you take the diksha, you know, you throw the money, all right, to the road or anything. 
just in one day, you know, you do all that one. Bhagwan Mahavir tradition was you do your asset distribution properly. Okay, that's what Bhagwan Mahavir did. All his asset, anybody who came to the palace, okay, he gave them. It was, there was no waste. There is nothing like, no, that kind of the things. And whichever way, all right, people, whatever the time, even at that time, whatever the, but that was the tradition was that make sure you distribute your asset to the needy people. And that was the tradition. That's, that's what he did. I mean, at that time, that's how the, this tradition established, okay? Is opposed to the current one, what we have it now. That's the, now after the Diksha, on the very first day, there are four, uh, before he attains the Kevardhan, what he did, he did it basically meditation. He did a certain yoga posture. Bhagwan Mavid for 12 and a half years remain silent, remain in a meditative position. And whenever he felt like body needs some food, he went to nearby town, got some food, but very healthy and if you look at it, the kind of the food what he was eating at that time, okay, and Acharang Sutra had a good, the first Agam has a you know, great description even, the what kind of the food monks were eating it at that time. And these kind of the food they ate, there was no oily, there is no rust, okay, because oil and rust and everything makes you sleepy. That is the holding part for meditation. So it is the basically the food he ate was helping, is a nutritional, but at the same time helping for meditation. It doesn't hurt. He never slept. I mean, you know, all his sadhana was just like, okay, fully awareness. How can I aware about every moment in my life? Okay, that is the basically his sadhana. And in that sadhana, once you are fully aware about every moment of your life, that is the definition of in reality, Kevagna. Okay, the Kevagna, in a certain posture, certain things, but ultimately end result is, are you fully aware about every moment in your life? Can you live your life in the present moment? That is the sadhana Bhagavan Mahavir did for 12 and it, and it took 12 and a half years to acquire that state. And in that 12 and a half years, he did not do tapascharya, even though we have a complete record of tapascharya, which I will show you. But the point is, uh, what, what is the point he, you know, he indicated? Whenever he felt like body needs some nutrients, he went ahead and ate, okay? So that is the kind of a things he never took like, a, Okay, Pachkan. Okay, let me, I am going to take a Pachkan of one week fasting or I'm going to do Pachkan of this one. No. He never did. Fasting occurred. He never did fasting. That's the difference between the two. Okay. What he did is basically his sadhana was meditation. And in meditation, he did not eat one meal, two meal, three meals, nothing. Whenever he felt like body needs some nutrients, that's the time he went and got the food. 
and we will see how many things no time but then there are so many upsargas and parishah no he went through it then these are the important one i'm just trying to show you that there is a uh, of course renunciation diksha you no know, there is a big show after that there is a affections by solapini this is a one thing uh, when he was doing meditating at that time one of these dev okay or no that's the one he created upsarga and to why did he do these things just he wanted to make sure because indra was praising him in his court here and he said nobody can you know change his mind he is a, such a deterministic person and uh, he he took the challenge and he did significant upsarga and bhagwan mahavir still did not you know change uh, that he cannot he, he cannot really disturb him from that one okay then the chand kausik nag we know the story many of you may have known it all all these stories we have put it in our story book uh, in the patshala and uh, because these are the all mahavir story chandan bala deadly uh, tortured by sangam and the last calamity is nail in the ears so you can see how many hardship he is went through it okay and after that nails in the ear which is the same guy he put it the liquid lead in the ears on the vasudev's no no life that he instructed the caretaker saying the clock once i sleep turn off the music turn let the musician go okay turn down and so and he did not do it and the same guy just uh, comes to and you no know, put the nail in the ears that was the last upsarga and after that bhagwan mahavir attains the kevadna all right now this is the penance that occurred okay this is the complete list in 12 and half years of bhagwan mahavir sadhana kal the fasting occurred of 6 months once fasting for 5 months and 25 days that's a chandan bala's fasting chandan bala time okay that he had the abhigra and to for because his abhigra was not fulfilled so he was going from day day by day one house to another house until he you no know, meets his abhigra okay then fasting of four months nine times fasting of three months and when i say this is the fasting but when he ate the meal he ate only one meal after this many fasting days you no know, after this many fasting days he ate only one meal and in the hand whatever that can fulfill in the hand so it is a kar patra so it is not like you no know, they bring the many pots and pans and you no know, we fill it up you no know, all that one that is nothing like that it is a kar patra there is no utensils nothing and only in that kar patra whatever it fits that food he ate right there and that's the end of it and then so in 12 and a half years he ate one meal 314 49 times so on an average 12 days uh fasting one day one meal that's it that's the kind of the so you can see he gives significant importance all right for not food okay meditation 
for 12 and a half years of meditation. And then he just ate every, on an average 12 days, one meal. Okay. So that's the, that's the kind of a, you know, summary I wanted to share. Now the, after that, he attains the cave altar and he is the light of omniscience. Okay. After our tradition says also, after attaining the Keval Gnan, okay, you deliver the discourse. But there was no human being nearby. So when he delivered the discourse, it was animals and from heaven, Dev Devis came. So to celebrate the omniscience occasion of Lord Mahavira. And since there was no human being, no one took a diksha. And this is another no exception for every other 20, uh, for other 20, 30 thinkers. On the very first day, they established the Jain order, the four four sung order, Sadhu, Sadhvi, Sravak and Shravika. In case of Bhagwan Mavira, it happened next day. Next day, he goes to nearby town and that's where he delivers the sermon. And that time, the establishment of order occurs. Mm -hmm. That means, no, the monk, there is a one monk took the diksha, male monk, I mean, that's monk, one sadhvi took the diksha, then one sravak took 12 vows of the lay people and one sravika did the 12 vows of the lay people. Because you have to have one person in each category, sadhu, sradvi, sravak and sravika. That's what the Jain Sangh means. Jain Sangh means all four, okay? Sadhu, sradvi, sravak and sravika. Once it happened, which happened in case of Mavira the next day, not on the day he attained the Kivadan. Okay. So this is just to give you some uh, idea. And even after that, okay, we will we will hear the story in during Parishan time about uh, Gandhars. There are eleven Gandhar Bhagwan Mavira. Gandhar means they are immediate disciples of Lord Mahavira. Immediate disciples means they took the diksha under Lord Mahavira. Okay, immediate. Their guru is the is Mahavira Swami. The Gautam Swami's guru is Mahavira Swami. Similarly, Chandan Bala's guru is Mahavira Swami. Okay, and then the Mahavira Swami after attaining Keval Gnan, everything, they run into the situation with Gosalak. Now, he threw the Trejolisha at the time. This is the after Keval Gnan. Bhagwan Mavir suffered. We, we call it suffered. Bhagwan Mavir did not suffer. Now, Keval Gnan is suffers it. Because suffering is a mental phenomena. While Physical no problem, physical things occurs. Okay, that's a physical, this is body things. No, Bhagavan Mahavir had like blood vomiting because of the Tejo, tejo Risha. But that we call it suffering. Bhagavan Mahavir did not suffer. There is no monia karma. One cannot suffer anything. In, in that sense, when there is no monia karma existed. Okay, I don't want to again go into too detail, too much detail into it. But you have to keep in mind there is a difference. I can break my leg while walking. But breaking the leg is not suffering. It is the physical problem. Okay. To suffer or not suffer because of breaking the leg, it is my mental things. And if I decide to say, okay, I'm glad 
I break. I'm 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 glad I break my leg, because now I will you no know, sleep for six weeks or I will lie down in the bed for six weeks, and I have a lot of reading to catch up, and I'll be able to do it. Otherwise, I will not have any time to even do the reading. So this is good thing happened to me that I broke my leg while walking, fell down and broke my leg. Walking and throw, you know, fell down, that is a Vedaniya karma. It is not, but the Mohaniya karma is the one that makes you happy or unhappy, or happy or miserable, okay? So you, you, you need to, when we discuss all the karma things and everything, that's, that's what you, know, you will know. Okay, so that's and then at the end you got attain the liberation. The next one, just a minute. Okay.